this is some dog code that we had written earlier in the year. And I'm going to use this to help us understand the this keyword in Java. I want to talk about one of these methods today. Let's just pick this one. And you can see here, I'm using this method to update the weight of the dog. And when this method is called, it's given a new piece of information, which is the new weight of the dog. And we take that new weight of the dog and we update our permanent variable weight with this information. So if I was going to look at this in the test code, let's look at the test code for a second here. Let's say I create this dog here. And let's say I want to change her weight. Later on, I could come along and say d.setWeight. And I could give it a different weight, like that. And then if I print the dog, it will still show Luna being 11 years old, but now her weight will go from 39 and a half to 99 and a half when we print it. Let's try this out. And you can see her weight has been updated. So let's talk a little bit now about what happens in this method. When I call this method right here, set weight, this number, 99.5, is copied into this variable right here called new weight. So inside this method, new weight is currently 99 and a half pounds. And what's happening is that that value is being copied into the dog's permanent weight variable. Notice that weight is an attribute of the dog. So every time you create a new dog, it makes a unique copy of all these variables. So this dog that I created with the variable name D and name Luna, it has its own name, age, weight, and license number variables as shown here. Now, I have an interesting idea for you today, but before I get to it, I want to talk a little bit about your English class and some stuff that you probably learned in English. We say that a, a complete sentence has to have a subject and a verb. So, for example, if I write this, what would be the subject and what would be the verb? Uh, Mr. Brian, can you tell me what is the subject of this sentence, sir? J the boy is the subject, it's the noun. And then what would be the verb here, Mr. Diego? So this would be the, the, the verb runs. In order to have a complete sentence in English, you have to have both a noun and you have to have a verb. So my question to you now is, if I didn't have this and I just wrote this, is that a complete sentence in English or not? It is a complete sentence, but I just got done telling you that in a sentence, you have to have a subject and a uh, uh, Sorry, you have to have a noun and a verb. Sir, can you tell me what is the subject of this sentence? And I'll give you a hint. The subject is implied. I didn't actually write it, but it's implied. What is the subject of this sentence, sir? So if I say run, who do I want to run? The person you're talking to. So basically, what I'm really saying here is you run. So now here, the you is implied. Could I write it explicitly? I could write it explicitly. I could write it like this. These two sentences here, whether the you is implied, like this, or this one here where the you is explicitly written, they mean the same thing. Now, let's go and look at the situation in computer science. Let's say I have a dog here like this, dog D equals new dog. And then I go D dot speak. It should be quite obvious who's speaking here. It's this D dog right here that's doing the speaking. Is it possible for me to have speak here without having a noun? Now, in the test code, it's not possible. Let me show you that. Right now, if I go here and I say D dot speak, that will work fine. You can see here is Luna speaking, right? But if I try this, if I go like this, you can see that the compiler complains. What is its complaint right here? It doesn't know which dog you want to speak. You see that, right? So that's kind of a problem. But there are cases in Java where we can call this method or this verb and have the noun or the subject being implied. I'm going to give you an example of that right now. Let's go back to our dog code and let's uh, you know, there are all these different speak methods. I'm going to get rid of these because they're just going to confuse us today. We'll just work with this one speak method right here, which is this one. And I'm going to introduce another method right here called public void play. And I'm going to do in here is I'm going to call speak like that. 
And my question is, when I hit the compile button, will this compile or will it complain that it doesn't know which dog wants to speak? Miss Mullen, I would like to hear your thoughts on this. Look over here at this play method I have. And what I want to know, Miss, is if I hit the compile button, do you think this will compile? Yeah. It will compile. But now, how come before in the test code when I said speak, it didn't know which dog to speak? Which dog is speaking right here? Whichever dog is told to play. That's very good, Miss. So basically, in the back in the test code, you can see it's the Luna dog that's being told to play. So by the time I call play and say speak, it must be the Luna dog that's going to speak. Can you see that the subject here is implied? Now, going back to our example of English class, you can see that here, if you specify a verb and do not specify the noun or the subject, the implication is that the subject is you. But in computer science, if you specify the verb, and don't specify the noun, the implication is the subject is me or I. You see the difference, right? Basically, what it's saying here is I do the speaking. Who, who am I? I'm the dog that's playing. So that's the difference when you have an implied subject in English versus when you have an implied subject in Java. Now, why is this important? Well, it turns out I mentioned to you that in English, you can take that implicit subject and turn it into an explicit subject. You can do the same thing in Java. You can take an implicit subject, in this case me, and you can write it as an explicit subject. Except we don't use the word me, we use this word called this. And what this basically says is, I am doing the speaking. The current dog, whichever one is playing, is doing the speaking. So you can see if I hit the compile button right now, it's going to allow this to compile. So what's happening here is I am taking away the implication and I'm writing it explicitly saying this speak, this dog is speaking. Now you might be asking, well, why would we ever need this? Why can't we just always imply it? And I'm going to show you that there are cases where you will need to explicitly write this keyword because it, it's going to remove some ambiguity. So let's look at a situation like that. Let's go back to this method we were talking about before, which is the set weight method. Now we haven't talked about this before, but do you think it will be possible for us to replace the parameter name with weight? Now if I do this right now, you can see it's going to comp complain that this variable doesn't exist. So maybe I could write something like this. And my question is, if I have the parameter name set to the same name as the attribute, is that going to cause any confusion? Is it going to cause any confusion to the people reading the code? And is it going to cause any confusion to the compiler? First, let's see if the compiler compiles this. And strangely, it does. And now my question is, is it going to do what you want it to do? Is it going to take this weight variable over here and save the value in this weight variable over here. What do you think? Do you think this will work? Do you think it will have the intended effect? Let's have a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our test code here, and you can see that uh, I don't need this right now. I'm going to get rid of that. You can see I've got Luna here. I've set her weight to a new weight, and I'm going to print it. Let's see if the change takes place as we did before. And you can see this time it didn't work. It's keeping the old weight. What's happening here and how can we fix it? Well, I think you'll understand that the compiler is not clear. When you say weight now, do you mean the weight parameter variable? Or do you mean the weight that is the attribute of the class? And when it's not sure, it's going to take the version that is the closest defined here. The weight variable that's the closest defined is this one. So what's happening is it's taking the parameter value and saving it in the parameter value. Does that do anything? It doesn't do anything. Here, what it's doing is it's taking this 99 and a half, copying it into the parameter value, and then it's copying it back into the parameter value. So that doesn't really accomplish anything. What we need to do is we need to find some way 
to differentiate between the weight variable that is the parameter to this method and then the weight variable that is an attribute to this class. And the way we do that is once again using the this pointer. And what we would do is we would say this dot weight. And when we do this dot weight, we're specifically saying the weight variable that belongs to this dog. In other words, this is the attribute. This is the parameter. Now, this will work fine again. And you can see, once again, the weight is being changed as I wanted before. Now, your next thought will probably be, why on earth would we want to name the parameter variable the same name as the attribute when that would just make it more confusing? And for a beginning programmer, that's true. It would be more confusing. But as you get more and more experience, you will find that this is actually less confusing than writing a different variable name. Because the person who's calling this method, as soon as they see weight here, they know that it's going to line up with the weight variable. That's the attribute of the dog. So now they never have to worry about whether this is the right variable or the right method that they're calling or anything like that. They know that the weight will be transferred to the weight of the dog. So now that you have a little bit more experience in programming, I can share this with you. And should you do this? Probably. Do you have to do this on the AP exam? No, you don't have to do it. But they might do it, in which case you have to understand what they're doing. So going back to this again, question is, do I need to have this? If I choose to make this parameter the exact same name as the attribute name, is the this pointer here going to be required, yes or no? Ms. Sujan, what do you think? It is. Because if you don't have it there, you can see it's going to just set this variable equal to itself, the parameter. That doesn't accomplish anything. So here, the this pointer is critical because it removes ambiguity from the compiler. It basically says, hey, I'm talking about a special weight variable. I'm talking about the one that is the attribute for this dog. Whenever I teach the this pointer, invariably the mistake that students make when I give this on a quiz is instead of writing it here, this way, they write it like this. They write it like that because they get confused. So here's the thing I need you to remember. The this pointer, it's official. It basically says the variable or the method belongs to the instance of the class. In this case here, it's the attribute. So these prefixes, they point to attributes of the class or the methods of the class. You see that? It's different than if I just have this, which is just a plain old parameter variable. So this is wrong, and this is the right way to write it. Remember that when I have an assignment operator here, the action, the action is to take the parameter weight and take this value and push it into this weight variable. So the action is from right to left on this line here with this assignment statement. It's, the information is going that way. It's going that way. So this is not right. So now I have already shown you two uses for the this variable. I've shown you right here how you can use it to distinguish between a parameter or versus the attribute. And I've also shown you how you can use it to turn an implicit call to a method to an explicit subject. So those are two uses. It turns out there are a bunch of other uses for the this pointer. I'm only going to show you one more today, and then we're going to call it done for the day. For Let's look at these two constructors that I have for the dog. Here is a constructor which is called the full featured constructor. And here is the constructor, which is the zero argument or default constructor. I could have a bunch of other constructors also, but I don't happen to have written them in this case. But here you can see I've got two of them. You'll also notice that a lot of the code here is similar, in some cases exactly the same, between this constructor and this constructor. It's a pain having to maintain multiple constructors because every time I change code or add code to this constructor, I'm going to have to do the same thing to the other constructors to make sure that they all stay in sync. That could create potential errors if I remember to update one of the constructors but forget to update another one. It's, this is not an ideal situation. What we would really like is to have one constructor that does all the work 
in this case the full feature constructor and have the other constructors just call this one that's what we want so what i'm going to do is i'm going to comment out this code here and instead i'm going to transfer control from one constructor to another and the way i'm going to do that is once again using the this pointer now, in the other two examples that I gave you, the this pointer was being used as a subject or as a noun. It was being used as a noun. Here, you can see that this pointer is going to have parentheses and it's being used as a verb. What's happening here is that this dog constructor is now calling another dog constructor. And the one that it's calling is this one right here. So it needs to have one, two, three parameters inside these parentheses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put those in. When I call this uh, constructor right here from this constructor, what do I want to set the new name variable to? Who can tell me? So look over here. I'm in the zero argument constructor. I want to call the full featured constructor. What do I want to set the dog's name to? I want to set it to unknown, so I do that like this. And what do I want to set the age? Now here, I have to set the age also. What do I want to set the age to here? Mr. Dominic. And of course, I want to set the weight to zero as well. You can see I've got one constructor calling another. Let me explain to you all the advantages of this now. I don't need all this code anymore. And furthermore, you can see that some of the code, like this code right here, I only need to write once. And all I have to do now going forward is maintain this one constructor. If I, in, if I add code, delete code, whatever I do, I don't have to change this constructor anymore. So this is just a much more efficient way. Now, in the past, the most common mistake I see students making when I teach them this is when I ask them how to do this on the quiz or the test, they write this. It's perfectly understandable that you write it that way because you think you're going to call this constructor from here, but that's just not the syntax that Java uses. Java uses the other syntax where you're going to use the this pointer to transfer control from one constructor to another. I need to give you one word of warning about this transfer process. When you use the this pointer here like this to transfer control from one constructor to another, it has to be the first line of code in the constructor. So for example, if I do this, you can see this will not compile because it's saying the call to the this pointer has to be the first statement in the constructor. That's just a rule. Okay, if we're constructing a dog and we call the constructor and you want to transfer control from one constructor to another, you have to do it immediately. You can't have any code before that. You can have code afterwards. Look, understand what's going to happen here now. I'm going to transfer control to this constructor, and after it finishes, I'm going to continue uh, running code here. If you need to do something special in the zero argument constructor, you can put it here if you need to. Most of the times, you won't have anything here. So those are three different uses for the this pointer that I have showed you. You can use it as a, a subject, call a method. You can go from being implicitly saying I'm speaking to explicitly saying I am speaking. You can use it to differentiate between a parameter variable and an attribute. And you can also use the this pointer to transfer control from one constructor to another. As a short exercise right now, what I would like you to do is I would like you to go back now and change these variable names to be the same variable names that the attributes use. And then I'd like you to rewrite this code using the this pointer so that everything still works as it's written right now. So once again, change this to name, change this to age, change this to weight, and then make the corresponding changes in the code. Please do that now. Okay, Kevin, what do I write here? What do you think? More confusing or less confusing? Once you get used to this, I think you're going to like it. Do you have to do this on the AP exam? You do not. If they ask you to write a constructor, you can just use a different name as was, different names for the variables as was here before. But a lot of people will write it like this. And the reason you need to understand this is that if you're reading someone's code, you need to understand what's going on. So you need to understand this style. Last thing, let's look at one of the other methods here. Mr. Mitty, can you help me, sir? What do I change here in the header? And what do I change in the body of the code, sir? 
All right, so that's it for the lesson today on the this pointer.